Congratulations on the results. Just tell us how interesting of a year this has been and what the <laughs> pandemic actually means for global milk demand. Hi, it's good to be here. Yeah, look, it has been um, a, a very much a year of two halves. You know, we, we had a, a great start to the year and then we came, obviously, into the pandemic uh, as we came through the new year. Um, and, and that was coupled with things like, you know, drought in parts of New Zealand, bushfires in Australia. So um, we seem to have had it all this year. Um, so it's really pleasing to see the way that the results have held up. Um, and, you know, we are very we're pleased with the year's results, but we're very cautious about what, what we're really facing into um, Things are currently holding up okay, but we're still seeing parts of our business impacted uh, by COVID, uh, particularly our food service business. Um, interestingly, in China, um, it's rebounded back in quite a healthy way, uh, but across other parts of Asia Pacific and other parts of the globe, uh, the food service business is still, um, is, is still kind of taking its time to come back. That's partly been offset by our consumer business. So we have people, you know, obviously cooking more at home um, and we're seeing good demand growth in terms of, you know, things like cheeses and butters and creams as people are cooking at home. So one of the benefits of our structure is that optionality of the different channels that we have. Tell us about that optionality. What's your strategy going forward, given all of these uncertainties around the world? Where will you focus on? Are you thinking about more cost cuttings? What's the strategy? Look, we, um, we reset our strategy a year ago, and on the back of that, you know, it was to really make us much more market and customer-led. Um, so we are now organised into three go-to-market uh, regions. That's allowing us to be more demand-focused and to really focus on driving demand. Um, so, you know... We are absolutely uh, focused on our, on, on our consumer business where we have it, but on our con uh, food service business. We've seen the rebound in China, and China continues to perform really well. And if you look at our overall year's results, our uh, food service profit actually grew 14% for the full year. So we're confident when it will come back, um, and we're partnering, obviously, with our major customers right across our food service business to make sure that when they're ready, uh, we have the product available and we're ready to go. Um, we are expecting and preparing in some respects that we, we, we may see some price contraction um, you know, with, with customers and with retailers, uh, potentially if we're going to recession um, and wallets start to tighten up, um, and, you know, we're looking at formulations that allow us to really adapt um, to those that shifting demand and that shifting um, spend that's available out in the market. Uh, so we're kind of uh, planning for the worst and hope, hoping for the best. Judith, do you expect Fonterra to benefit because of its New Zealand roots from the Australia-China trade tensions that we're seeing? And how much of your future growth do you expect to come from the Chinese market? Um, we Obviously, the primary relationship and the primary source of a product is between New Zealand and China, and that has been long been the case, and we have great relationships there. You know, at one stage, I think we were shipping 90% of the whole milk powder that China consumed came from New Zealand. So that is the primary relationship, and we supplement that source from time to time with Australia, although Australia is more of a, a partner to the, the, the Japanese cheese market. Um, so we have that arbitrage opportunity, but we do see... Uh, China is, you know, we continue to see growth there across our ingredients business, our food service. Um, and, you know, whilst our consumer business has been impacted by the disruption in Hong Kong, um, mainland China um, is still continuing to, continue to see uh, growth in, in consumer dairy, dairy demand. So uh, China is definitely um, a focus for us, but as is other parts of Asia Pacific, and we are seeing, you know, across Southeast Asia, we continue to see dairy becoming part of the, of the, the regular diet, um, and we're starting to see... Um, consumers and customers trading up right across Southeast Asia. So, you know, it is China, but we're not, you know, we, we are diversified. Um, and, and I think that has stood us in good stead, uh, particularly those during these challenging COVID-19 times. And challenging times for the economy, which hasn't seen a situation like this since the Great Depression from this week's GDP mm. numbers. Are you in favour of more monetary policy stimulus? We've been talking about negative rates from the RBNZ a lot. I'm wondering if you see any kind of impact on your business uh, from that happening. I'd imagine you'd keep wanting a lower Kiwi. Yeah, well, you know, we we, we would, um, and, you know, I guess we're prepared for, for, for any eventuality. So I think, um, you know... the 
how we do commodity risk and trading. We're always looking at how we can kind of, you know, um, de-risk our business. So, um, you know, we would like, obviously, to see, um, you know, consumers more confident um, and out and about eating out um, and anything that we can do to make that happen uh, will be good for the demand side of our business. So, you know, we, we, are, we continue to monitor that very, very carefully, being conscious of price point and discretion we spend and making sure, as I say, we have the right product lineup to be able to respond um, to that consumer demand profile. How much have you benefited already from uh, pressure on the Kiwi? Um, yeah, um, I, I can't comment exactly on that, but you mm. know we have we have obviously seen some benefit, um, um, and you know we you know in in Australia also you know we the dollar was really low um, and that has kind of bounced back up. So you know it, it's just a, such a volatile time at the moment, um, and that's you know whilst we we're kind of cautiously optimistic, um, but being very kind of um, cost conscious, making sure that we keep opex under control um, because. You know, we've just prepared for things may get better, they may get worse, um, and we need to be prepared in, in any case. How important is it, Fonterra, in your future business strategy that you remain value-driven even more so than just volumes? Um, it, it, it's, it's actually the fundamental uh, to our strategy, um, and it's why we're investing in things like um, what we call our functional nutrition units, and those are the kind of the advanced ingredients, things like our sports and active living, um, our medical nutrition, and our pediatric businesses as well as food service. Those are the you know, kind of the premium margins for us. That's where the value add is. That's where the consumer proposition really comes from in terms of more protein, probiotics, um, lipids. Um, so those are, you know, uh, and fat, you know, that's where we can really command margins and that's where the innovation and our R&D really comes to play in terms of consumer benefits. That's where we're focusing. We know that health and wellness continues to be a trend. Even when wallets become tight, people are conscious. They need to stay fit. They need to stay healthy uh, and mentally and physically. Um, and dairy has, you know, attributes that help in, in all those cases. So that's really where we're focusing in terms of that kind of advanced ingredient space, both from an ingredient and our own consumer business point of view. Judith, of course, as New Zealand heads to the polls, what is your list of policy priorities that you want from the new government? Look, we um, obviously we want. Um, it's all about our farmers and uh, and really kind of making sure that our farmers have got sustainable businesses. Um, so we're really, you know, we're looking at, you know, what the impact of climate change, of carbon trading uh, schemes, and how we make sure that we have, you know, sustainable farming operations so that we can keep milk flowing. At the end of the day, our businesses, we are a dairy business, um, so we need milk production to remain strong. Um, so the policies around how we make sure that water, um, environmental factors um, and carbon are particularly at the top of our agenda.